Fifth Fifth console is go. SPE. SP is go. LRD. LRD is go. SRO. SRO is go. You have a range cleared launch. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce our first keynote speaker, Natalie Panic. When I was a young girl, my dream was to go to outer space. For me, it wasn't enough just to want to be an astronaut. I was going to be an astronaut. Never put a limit on your imagination, the power of a dream, or the will to enable it. Make sure that you are fiercely curious, always learning, and constantly asking questions about how the world works. For the last 20 years, I have been working towards the goal of exploring beyond Earth's boundaries. Any agency that is recruiting astronauts is looking for individuals who are multidisciplinary and who have a very diverse cross-section of experiences that would make them good candidates and good team players and able to work well under pressure. It's not good looking up at the rain coming. <laughs> Keep your eye on the prize, eye on the prize. Any of us who decide we want to go to space and then dedicate a large amount of time working towards it, particularly when it requires um, personal sacrifice along the way. You have to be stoic in order to do that. Definitely, I think all my experiences in my education, in my career, in the outdoors, all help bolster my application. The, the application process for me raised different feelings. You have those moments where you're really confident and you think, oh, I've got this. I'm very skilled at my job. I have this amazing public outreach platform. They are definitely gonna want me on their team as an astronaut. And then you see some of the stats or numbers coming out, like almost 4,000 people applied for two jobs. And I was thinking, there's no way I'm gonna be selected to be an astronaut. There's way more qualified people out there who are better suited for the job. So you, there was fluctuations between thinking, I have it, I own this, and yeah, it's never gonna happen. And then you get into the top 100 and think, wow, this is just a little step closer. I'm almost there. I find it so easy to zone out when you're just staring into a fire. Do you remember when we got to see the telescopes at the Lick Observatory? That was awesome, how the whole room moved. Yeah. By the way, did you see the new photos from Juno? Yes. Oh my God. I know. They're like a Van Gogh painting. Jupiter was always my favorite planet. And then seeing like those blue swirls in addition to the red in the middle. Saturn was mine, so I've been loving the Cassini. This is called the Vixen Porta. Fun fact. A female fox is a vixen. I grew up in Calgary. I spent a lot of time outdoors with my family, camping, hiking, backpacking. When it started to get dark, you at the campfire, you got to have those moments of reprieve from the fire to go look at the stars, see the constellations, hope you would see a shooting star and just wonder what's out there. Don't you know the little jingle to know this planet from the solar system? My very elderly mother just sold us nine pizzas. <laughs> Nothing I've done in my career has been, I think, on a single path. Like, I went to school for mechanical and aerospace engineering. I studied combustion and microgravity and then ended up working in space robotics. 
we would say that the larger goal of the space industry is to explore planetary rovers, science satellites, exploring the depths of the solar system, International Space Station, the next deep space gateway. We need scientists, engineers, people who are willing to take risks, people who are willing to unite a team and who have a vision. That's who we need. All this bottom part of ExoMars, this is the part that we're building. On each side of the rover, there's two bogies, and then each bogey has a pivot in the center. My passion for aerospace and a career in the space industry brought me to Toronto. We're so closed in, you can barely see anything. I mean, you have an opening to the sky there, a little bit there. Otherwise, it's just a concrete jungle. Closed in on all sides. <laughs> Definitely makes me want to escape. Toronto is a hard city to get out of. You have water on the south side, very few highways going north, and then running east or west is just community after community. So it's definitely a challenge. So this is where I keep ideas for future adventures. So it could be anything like a ski tour in Alaska to going to Patagonia in South America, backpacking in Switzerland, rafting. I have three binders right now. I'm sure I will continue to grow my collection of bucket list trips. Like how spectacular does that look? Come on. more people who are curious about what's right in their own backyards, who are willing to question everything, who are willing to challenge ideas and perspectives. And I think we need to encourage more people to see themselves as explorers and to ask big questions and to dream big. Yeah, after we pass that really challenging section. a spot where you could get one wheel going flatter. Okay, let's try it. I should be able to clear these boulders, right? Yeah, I think so. If you go up there, I would go around more, up on the rocks. Nice. All right, now what do you think here? Try and stay high up here? Yeah, I would stay high and then go left. Sweet, nice natters. I think we're okay in high gear on this rose for now, or should we be in low? Depends how fast we're going, right? I wonder where I topped out at. Sci-fi was a huge influence for me growing up. I watched Star Trek The Next Generation and shows like Stargate religiously. Seeing those shows that made me want to be the captain of my own starship or be part of this crew that was exploring the universe in places that no one had been. It was exciting as a kid to imagine that that could one day be possible. So 
when I was about probably 10 or 11 years old, I got this white streak of hair on my forehead. It was like this big shock because nobody knew where it came from or, or what it was and ultimately found out from some visits with the doctors that it was caused by a skin disorder called vitiligo. So there's just no pigment in that area. Every time I met anyone, it was, oh my God, you look like Rogue. You're like Rogue from the X-Men. So the streak of white hair for most of my life was almost like my superpower. It made me feel super cool when I was the one who wanted to be studying and doing science and experimenting. I think what's special about being here is that somewhere, I guess both of us coming from the space community with dreams of traveling to space or maybe another planet, it, it kind of reminds us of Mars, of what it would be like to be two astronauts, part of a crew exploring another planet, the first woman to set foot on another planet. <laughs> After I had found out I was in the top 100 and proceeded through my medical, a little while later, I received a notification from the Canadian Space Agency just letting me know that, unfortunately, because of that white hair and the skin disorder, I was automatically disqualified from the recruitment campaign. So, kind of ended there in that moment. <laughs> I had never in my wildest imagination or dreams thought that this silly piece of white hair that's been part of my life for so long would stop me in my tracks from this dream. Well, I think with Natalie, you know, what you see is, is what you get. And so, you know, her optimistic outlook on life, which is quite infectious, uh, is something that she's been able to do a really good job of, of sharing, I think. Um, not many people can say they work on a Mars rover. <laughs> and that's pretty cool to be able to say, I've made this great contribution to this piece of hardware that's exploring another planet. Like, that's super rad. So I found it interesting hearing Scott Kelly saying he read the right stuff and that just changed his whole life. Yeah, it's interesting too, because he struggled a lot. Absolutely. And he was talking about how he botched one of his landings on the aircraft carrier. Oh yeah, almost died. And was like, oh, I gotta get better at this. No kidding. <laughs> yeah, failure is an option. I mean, we all fail all the time. My story is a perfect example of that, but it's about what you do with that failure that matters. Not getting selected to be an astronaut made me realize how passionate I am about exploring Earth. What do I want? What is my next big goal? What legacy do I want to leave? I am definitely in the process of redefining and reinventing myself. It's exciting to have that unknown, and I think that's what draws me to exploration. I'm never going to stop exploring. Did you see my necklace? It says never stop exploring. Right. <laughs> Old friend, I still dream about you. I still dream about you.